God says, stand in faith even when you are having the hardest time of your life. I let go of any deterrence that would keep me from achieving my objectives. Watch this video till end if you believe God. Everything that is currently disintegrating is making room for your long-awaited benefits. To manifest in your life, be patient and have faith in your path. What is happening is worthwhile. God's urge you to be aware of impending change. Now everything in your life will start to advance. Type 1717 if you trust God. You'll notice a change from shortage to abundance, from stagnation to flow, from confusion to clarity and from agony to calm the pivotal moment is at hand. The source is telling you, right now it's your moment to shine source is moving mountains for you. You stopped encouraging your inner critic and started speaking only encouraging words to yourself. You have a ton of brand new opportunities coming up be incredibly patient as you develop. When a mistake is made instead of punishing yourself for making a mistake learn to appreciate it. Type heal me my Lord Jesus. Spend some time alone and put your priorities ahead of your distractions. Everything is starting to make perfect. Sense as to why some possibilities did not materialize and why some doors were closed, your current course is taking you towards a highly promising future. New doors are opening today. The source is telling you that prosperity is flowing in all directions in terms of money, the mind, the spirit, and the body. If you want to attract huge money effortlessly, starting today, check link in comments below to know the shocking wealth secrets revealed by rogue NASA scientist. Recognize that blessings are coming every day. Expect nice things to occur when you anticipate positive outcomes. Everything you require to advance to the next stage of growth will be sent your way as the universe responds to this frequency. Type 2121 if you trust God. God never gives you a dream that matches your budget can be viewed as a metaphor for life, where the term budget symbolizes our self-imposed limitations or constraints. It is a testament to the limitless nature of human ambition, aspiration, and potential, with the underlying message being that our dreams and goals are often larger than our current capacity, yet this should not dissuade us from striving to achieve them. Every person has dreams, dreams that are wild, boundless, and often considered unrealistic by those who see the world only within the confines of practicality. These dreams may range from aspiring to become a world-class athlete, to developing a revolutionary piece of technology, to finding a cure for an incurable disease. Subscribe to channel if you believe in Jesus. When we first conceive of these dreams, we often find ourselves with limited resources, capabilities, or budget. However, these limitations are not the measure of our potential. We must realize that it is often our dreams that guide us towards growth and accomplishment. They propel us to learn, adapt, and rise above the challenges. They push us to extend beyond our comfort zones and transform our limitations into strengths. They compel us to not settle for the ordinary, but to strive for the extraordinary. The initial budget we have is not meant to confine us, but to push us beyond our preconceived limitations. In this perspective, the dreams God places within our hearts are not cruel jokes, mismatched with our ability to achieve them. Type 1010 if you believe in God power. Instead, they are divine challenges, catalysts for our personal and spiritual growth. They are the compass that leads us on our life's journey towards a destination far grander than we could ever envision. 
As we venture on this journey, we are not alone. Our dreams are shared by those who cross our paths, mentors who guide us, friends who encourage us, and communities that support us. Through shared dreams and combined efforts, our collective budget increases, expanding our resources and capabilities. Type 1212 to claim it. There are many instances throughout history where people have achieved great things, despite starting from humble beginnings or having minimal resources at their disposal. From inventors working in garages to athletes born in poverty, from social activists making a global impact to artists breaking all stereotypes, each of these individuals had a dream that was significantly larger than their initial budget. Type A men, if you agree. Yet, they strived and persisted, and in doing so, changed the world in their own unique ways. Chasing our dreams with a finite budget teaches us important life lessons. It instills in us qualities like resilience, perseverance, faith, and determination. We learn to be resourceful and innovative. It guides us to discover our hidden potential and the courage to break through boundaries. Type 1 Love You God More than anything else, it helps us understand that the journey towards achieving our dream is as valuable as the dream itself. Hence, the statement God never gives you a dream that matches your budget is a testament to the boundless human spirit. It is an encouragement to break free from our self-imposed limitations and to dream bigger, strive harder, and aim higher. It is a reminder that our dreams are not just possibilities, but also opportunities for growth, transformation, and achievement. So let us not be dismayed by the disparity between our dreams and our budget. Instead, let us embrace this divine challenge with open arms, unwavering faith, and relentless perseverance. For in the end, it is not our budget, but our dreams that truly define us. The phrase, follow me, and my laws and anything you ask in my name will be given to you, holds profound significance. Type my God is with me. It carries the essence of faith, obedience, and the promise of fulfillment. In essence, it is a divine guarantee of an abundant life to those who walk in God's path and live according to His laws. At the heart of this statement lies the concept of obedience. To follow God and His laws means to live our lives according to the principles He has laid down. These principles, reflected in the form of commandments, ethical teachings, and spiritual values, provide a roadmap for a meaningful and righteous life. They are not restrictions, but rather guidelines designed to direct our actions towards love, peace, justice, and harmony. God's laws serve as a compass, guiding us through life's complexities and challenges. They teach us to love and respect not only ourselves, but also others. Type 888 if you needed this. They remind us of the importance of honesty, integrity, compassion, and kindness. They emphasize the value of humility and the power of forgiveness. Following these laws cultivates in us the virtues necessary for a harmonious existence, enriching our lives and the lives of those around us. The call to follow me is an invitation to emulate the divine qualities exemplified by God. It is about embodying God's love and compassion in our actions and interactions. It's about selflessness, servitude, and the willingness to put others before oneself. By following God, we learn to see the world through His eyes, discerning what is truly important and distancing ourselves from the superficial and transient. 
However, following God and His laws is not merely about obedience, it is also about developing a close, intimate relationship with God. It is about trust, faith, and surrender. It means to entrust our lives into His hands, confident in His wisdom and goodness. Type 999 to receive it. It is to surrender our will to His, accepting that His plans for us are far superior to our own. The promise that anything you ask in my name will be given to you is a testament to God's boundless generosity and love. This does not mean we will get everything we desire, for God is not a genie granting wishes. Instead, it assures us that when we align our will with His, when we seek things that are in accordance with His divine plan, our requests will be granted. Asking in God's name is more than simply uttering a phrase, it is a matter of the heart. It implies that our requests are made with a spirit of humility and trust, acknowledging that God knows what is best for us. It means asking for things that glorify God, benefit others, and lead to our spiritual growth. Type 1616 if you love Jesus. The statement follow me, and my laws and anything you ask in my name will be given to you, therefore, is a blueprint for a fulfilled and meaningful life. It is a call to follow a path of righteousness, to cultivate a deep relationship with God, and to align our desires with His divine plan. It assures us that when we live according to God's laws and seek His will, our lives will be enriched with His blessings. This promise of divine provision should inspire us to strive for a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. It should motivate us to live according to His laws, not out of obligation, but out of love and reverence for Him. It should encourage us to surrender our desires to His will, trusting that He knows what is best for us. Type Amen if you want God blessings. For in following God, obeying His laws, and asking in His name, we find not only the fulfillment of our requests, but also the key to a life of purpose, meaning, and abundance. The phrase you have been asking but not committing fully to me presents an intriguing exploration of the relationship between human beings and God based on the idea that spiritual fulfillment requires a reciprocal exchange. To understand this, let's first consider the concept of asking. We ask God for numerous things in our lives, protection, provision, wisdom, and healing, to name a few. We pray for our needs, for our ambitions, for relief from distress. Asking from God, in itself, is not wrong. In fact, in many religious texts, the faithful are encouraged to turn to God in their times of need, to seek His help, His guidance, and His grace. However, it's the second part of the phrase, the aspect of committing fully, that provides a deeper insight. Committing to God is more than just recognizing His existence or praying in times of need. Shout, bless me my Lord Jesus. It's about entrusting our lives to Him, placing Him at the center of our thoughts, words, and actions. It's about embracing His values, striving to emulate His attributes, and living our lives according to His guidance. Commitment requires surrender. It means letting go of our ego, our desire for control, and our limited understanding. It involves accepting that while we might not fully understand His plans, we trust that they are for our ultimate good. Commitment implies the willingness to make sacrifices, to prioritize our relationship with God over our worldly desires and comforts. Type Heal Me Lord. But often, we falter in this commitment. 
We might pray regularly, but still allow our actions to be guided by selfishness or pride. We may ask God for guidance, but choose our own path when His guidance is not aligned with our desires. We might seek His protection, but fail to acknowledge Him in our moments of safety and peace. This is what the phrase signifies when it says not committing fully. Like this video to get God blessing. Asking without committing is like wanting the fruits without nurturing the tree. The relationship with God is not a one-way street where we keep receiving without giving back. What we are called to give back is not material offerings, but something more profound, our devotion, our obedience, our faith, and our love. God doesn't need these from us, but we need to give these for our own spiritual growth, for our own transformation. By committing to God, we invite His divine presence into our lives, allowing it to shape us, guide us, and refine us. We align ourselves with His love, His peace, and His wisdom, leading us to live more fulfilling and meaningful lives. When we commit fully to God, our perspective changes. We begin to see our life not as a random series of events, but as a divine journey guided by God's loving hand. We see our challenges not as burdens, but as opportunities for growth. We see our blessings not as mere luck, but as expressions of God's love and mercy. In this commitment, we also find a profound sense of peace. We no longer fear the unknown, for we trust in God's wisdom. We no longer feel alone, for we know God is with us. We no longer get overwhelmed by our problems, for we believe in God's power. So, when God says, you have been asking but not committing fully to me, it is a loving call for deeper engagement, a divine invitation to a more profound relationship. Type 1111 if you believe in Jesus' power. It is God asking us to trust Him fully, to surrender our lives to Him, and to align our will with His. For in this commitment, we find not just the answers to our prayers, but also a life of purpose, fulfillment, and eternal peace. The phrase, life will not always be great, so I want you to remember great times when troubles hit you, is a powerful expression of divine wisdom. It communicates the inevitable reality of life's trials while encouraging resilience and positivity through the power of perspective and memory. Life is an intricate tapestry of diverse experiences. Some of these experiences bring joy, happiness, and satisfaction, while others carry lessons hidden behind discomfort, sadness, and pain. Just as seasons change, life, too, is a continuous cycle of highs and lows, growth and stagnation, joy and sorrow. In other words, life will not always be great. Acknowledging this fact is essential because it helps us develop a realistic perspective on life. Don't skip this video watch till end. They are not aberrations or punishments, but opportunities for growth, learning, and transformation. When life throws us into the whirlwind of troubles, it is easy to get lost in the storm. It can feel as though we are submerged in darkness with no way out. These are the moments when we may question our worth, our abilities, and sometimes even our faith. But it is precisely in these times that God urges us to remember the great times. Remembering the great times during difficulties is not about escapism or denial of the present. It's about drawing strength from our past, our experiences of joy, success, and fulfillment. 
It's about reminding ourselves that just as we had experienced good times before, we are capable of experiencing them again. These memories serve as an affirmation of our resilience and our capacity to overcome. They reassure us that the same person who laughed, loved, and thrived in the past is still here, capable of laughter, love, and growth, no matter the present circumstances. They remind us that just as day follows night, our moments of joy will follow our moments of struggle. Type Amen to participate in God's journey. Remembering the great times is also about rekindling hope. It's about shifting our focus from the problems that consume us to the possibilities that await us. It's about realizing that our current situation, no matter how bleak, is not our final destination. Moreover, recalling these happy moments brings us comfort. It revives the feelings of joy, peace, and satisfaction within us, providing a soothing balm to our troubled hearts. It brings a smile to our faces, a spark of positivity that can light up even the darkest corners of our existence. So, when God says, life will not always be great, so I want you to remember great times when troubles hit you, He is providing us with a strategy for resilience. He is encouraging us to use our power of memory to navigate through our storms. He is reminding us of our inherent strength and our capacity for joy. This divine wisdom serves as a beacon of hope, guiding us through our darkest hours towards the light of better days. It is a reassurance that our struggles are temporary, but our strength is enduring. It is a call to keep faith, to stay hopeful, and to remain resilient, no matter the trials we face. Comment, yes, I have faith in God. In essence, God's message is a reminder that life's beauty is not just in its peaks of joy, but also in its valleys of challenges. By recalling our joyous moments during our challenging times, we learn to appreciate life in its entirety with its ebbs and flows, highs and lows, joys and sorrows. And it is through this journey, marked by trials and triumphs, that we grow, evolve, and come closer to our divine purpose. The statement, put me first in all of your plans this week and I will make your path straight, is a beautiful and profound representation of the importance of prioritizing God in our lives. It illuminates the way in which divine guidance can navigate us through the complexities of life, provided we give God the steering wheel. Putting God first means acknowledging Him as the source of our existence and the guide of our lives. It means consulting Him before we make decisions, entrusting our plans to Him, and seeking His wisdom and guidance. It means considering His teachings and principles when we make choices, and aligning our actions with His commandments and will. To put God first in our plans means to weave our intentions, our actions, and our decisions around His divine guidance. Type yes, I trust in God's plan. It is to recognize that while we may draft the blueprint of our lives, the final architecture is in His hands. This recognition is not a sign of weakness, but rather an expression of trust and surrender to God's wisdom and grace. This commitment is not restricted to any particular time or place. It is as applicable on a weekday as it is on a weekend, as relevant in a boardroom as it is in a worship place. Every decision we make, every action we take, should be soaked in the spirit of divine priority. When we place God at the center of our plans, we open ourselves to His divine wisdom. We allow His light to illuminate our paths and His love to guide our steps. 
We give him the power to straighten our paths, to smooth our roads, and to guide us to our intended destinations. The promise that God will make our path straight is a testament to his divine provision. This doesn't mean that our journey will be without challenges or difficulties. What it does mean, however, is that these challenges will not derail us from our destined path. It means that even when we stumble, we will not fall, for His grace will uphold us. It means that even when we are lost, we will be found, for His wisdom will guide us. The straight path in this context does not merely signify a life devoid of obstacles, but rather a life aligned with God's purpose. It is a life marked by peace, fulfillment, and spiritual growth. It is a life guided not by worldly ambitions, but by divine wisdom. Type 333 if you needed this. However, to receive this divine promise, we need to do our part, which is to put God first. This involves more than just a verbal declaration, it requires action. It involves aligning our thoughts with God's teachings, conforming our behaviors to God's commandments, and molding our desires to God's will. God says, Put me first in all of your plans this week and I will make your path straight. He is inviting us to a life of divine priority and promising us a life of divine guidance. This call for prioritizing God is not a restriction, but a liberating path that opens the door to wisdom, peace, and fulfillment. It is a roadmap to a straight path, guided by the divine light, leading us towards our divine purpose. Remember, when God leads, He also provides. When He guides, He also supports. So, let us put God first in our plans, entrusting our lives to His wisdom and grace. Let us allow Him to straighten our paths and lead us to a life of purpose, fulfillment, and eternal peace. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post a new video. Until next time, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.